assalamu alaikum in this video we will be dealing with the asthma asthma is basically a chronic lung disease which causes the narrowing and inflammation of airways the ma uh, mainly involved airways in asthma are the bronchi and the bronchioles and in asthma these bronchi and the bronchioles are chronically inflamed as you can see in this picture on the left hand side is a normal airway with no inflammation and wide lumen on the right hand side the airway is very much inflamed and there is excess mucus production which has considerably decreased the lumen of airway and this can make uh, the breathing difficult for the patient what is the normal breathing uh, pattern of a person we inhale the oxygen rich gas through our, no our mouth or the nostrils and this passes through our upper and lower airways uh, there is the bronchi and the bronchioles and ultimately it reaches the alveoli and the alveoli are the air sacs where the exchange of gases uh, takes place the blood here acquires the oxygen and gives off the carbon dioxide and this is the process of uh, oxygenation of the blood now how does asthma occur we will try to answer some of the questions in this section to get a better understanding of this what uh, surrounds the bronchi and the bronchioles what uh, is outside of these bronch uh, bronchi and the bronchioles surrounding them these are the smooth muscles and what are the functions of these smooth muscles these may either dilate increasing the lumen of airways and making the passage of air through them easy or they can constrict decreasing the lumen of airways and when there is considerable uh, decrease in the lumen of airways there is considerable uh, inflammation the patient may experience signs and symptoms of chest tightness and dyspnea that is difficulty in uh, breathing what is inside these structures what uh, are the uh, what are the structures that are present inside these uh, bronchi and the bronchioles these bronchi and bronchioles are lined on the inside with the mucosal lining and this mucosal lining contains the goblet cells and the goblet cells are responsible for the production of mucus which helps in trapping the bacteria and the foreign particles and helps to protect our delicate tissues of the lungs but uh, during an asthma attack these goblet cells are overstimulated that is they produce excess of the mucus which increases the inflammation of the mucosal lining and this uh, further decreases the inflow of uh, air and the patient may experience cough due to the excess mucus production and uh, um, patient may under, uh, also experience wheezing because when the air is uh, traveling inside these inflamed airways and uh, there is also the excess mucus production the air uh, air is passing through the excess mucus and this produces the high pitched whistling sound which is the wheezing sound due to the uh, due to the serious uh, inflammation of the airways there is air trapping that is uh, not enough uh, there not enough air is leaving the air spaces to breathe out and uh, there is the accumulation of uh, uh, air inside these air spaces and the oxygen is not getting inside the alveoli this causes the build up of uh, carbon dioxide in the blood and the level of oxygen in the blood decreases because carbon dioxide is acidic in nature this can cause the respiratory respiratory acidosis in the patient as the cause of asthma is not uh, fully understood is not uh, fully known there may be some genetic or some environmental conditions which uh, interact to cause the asthma but there uh, are uh, some of the well-known risk factors which can uh, trigger an asthma attack and these include the airborne allergens, cold air, hay fever or the allergic rhinitis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, perfumes, dust and the dander. What are the clinical manifestations in asthma? It uh, contains early signs and symptoms and the late signs and symptoms. The early signs and symptoms include the shortness of breath because the inflammation is uh, inflammation in the airways is increasing and the patient is uh, easily getting short of breath the patient is fatigued with physical activity because uh, not enough oxygen is getting inside the airways uh, due to excess mucus mucus production the pa uh, patient may experience frequent coughing and wheezing with activity 
if these signs and symptoms are not controlled at this stage the late signs and symptoms may start which include the chest tightness wheezing which is a high-pitched whistling sound and looks like this and the patient may start uh, coughing uh, continuously due to the excess mucus production there is dyspnea and there is uh, increased respiratory rate to get in, uh, in an attempt to get in enough oxygen and if uh, the late signs and symptoms are not controlled promptly these can progress to more severe uh, signs and symptoms which includes chest retraction uh, what is chest retraction in this condition the stomach is sucked in and the uh, chest that is the rib cage protrudes out because the patient is not able to breathe uh, with uh, normal breathing and the patient can't speak in this uh, condition the cyanosis starts to appear which is the bluish discoloration of the nail beds and the mucosal membranes and is uh, easily visible on the lips and uh, the nail beds uh, cyanosis is a sign of uh, decreasing levels of oxygen in the blood the patient may also uh, start to sweat profusely the class classification of uh, asthma there are four uh, classes of asthma first is the intermittent in which the asthma attacks during day or uh, during day not more than twice a week and during night not more than twice a month and in mild persistent asthma there are the asthma attacks during the day more than twice a week and uh, attacks during the night twice a month in moderate persistent asthma the there are daily uh, day attacks of asthma and the night attacks are more than twice or once a week in severe persistent asthma there are frequent day and night attacks of uh, the asthma the zones of asthma treatment or this uh, asthma action plan there are three zones of uh, asthma treatment uh, the green yellow and the red in the green zone the patient is not experiencing any signs and symptoms of asthma and the patient patient has well controlled asthma and the patient is uh, able to do most of the work without getting uh, tired and in this uh, zone the patient is advised to take the long-term medications that are already uh, prescribed for him in the yellow zone the patient starts to experience uh, some of the signs and symptoms and uh, these may include the chest tightness trouble in breathing or the patient may wake up at, at night because of the asthma signs and symptoms and the patient is not uh, able to do all the work that he used to do normally because of these signs and symptoms and in the red zone which is actually a medical alert the patient is uh, has a lot of trouble breathing and uh, the quick relief medications that is the short short acting medications are not working in this uh, stage and the patient is uh, uh, instructed to reach a hospital on immediately basis now how can we diagnose the asthma first we uh, get a baseline assessment of the patient including the vital signs and the assessment of the respiratory system to establish a baseline data of the patient uh, noting the ABG that is the arterial blood gases of the patient to know about the levels of oxygen carbon dioxide bicarbonates of the blood and the pH of the blood we can use the spirometry uh, spirometry is an easy way to check airways and lungs the patient takes a deep breath and exhales it into the hose which is attached to a spirometer and it records how much air the patient blows and how quickly he does this and a patient with uh, swollen airways is likely to have a low score and with patient and patient ha having normal airways uh, will have a high score of uh, spirometry pulse oximetry can be used to know about the concentration of uh, oxygen inside the blood the medical management includes the bronchodilators and the uh, anti-inflammatory agents first we will talk about the bronchodilators as the name suggests these are the drugs or the medications which dilate these inflamed bronchioles 
and eases the breathing. The first class is the beta agonistus. This uh, is taken as the inhaled form and uh, the short acting beta agonist includes the solubitamol. This acts very quickly and is used in uh, uh, asthma attacks. This is not for the daily treatment of asthma. The long term uh, beta agonists include the salmetrol. This is used for uh, on a long term basis. And uh, this is usually used with uh, in combination with the corticosteroid and not used for an acute uh, asthma attack. The, sign, uh, the uh, side effects of uh, beta agonists uh, include the increased heart rate and the nervousness. The next class of bronchodilators are the anticholinergics. These are also taken as inhaled form and the short acting uh, anticholinergic includes ipratropium. It uh, is used in the patients who cannot tolerate beta agonist and uh, thus it is used as an alternate to the beta agonists. The long term uh, anticholinergics include the tiotropium. The next class of bronchodilators are the theophylline. This is taken as the uh, oral uh, medication and uh, this is not uh, very commonly used due to the, its uh, toxicity and a patient uh, receiving theophylline is advised to avoid coffee because theophylline and coffee are having, having the same effects and uh, having coffee with uh, theophylline increases the risk of uh, getting toxicity. The next class of drugs are the anti-inflammatory drugs. These are the drugs which reduce the inflammation in the airways. The first class are the corticosteroids taken as inhaled, oral or uh, intravenous medication depending on the severity of signs and symptoms. These are used for the long term use and not for the acute attacks of uh, asthma. The most commonly used corticosteroids are the fluticasone, butisonide and the beclomethasone. These are when a patient has to use uh, both the bronchodilators and the anti-inflammatory agents. The patient is advised to take first the uh, bronchodilators because the bronchodilators dilate the bronchi and the airways and then the corticosteroid may go deep inside the airways and produce its beneficial effect. Now a complication of uh, using corticosteroids is thrush which is the fungal infection of uh, throat uh, due to these corticosteroids and to av avoid this a patient is uh, asked to use a spacer which you can see in this picture and uh, also the patient has to rinse the mouth uh, to avoid the uh, to avoid the chances of getting the thrush these are not used for the quick relief the next class of anti-inflammatory agents includes the le uh, leukotriene modifiers these are taken as the oral form and uh, uh, the most important medication in this uh, class is the montelukast what does the montelukast do it blocks the function of leukotriene and uh, leukotriene is responsible for uh, contracting the smooth muscles and increasing the mucus production in this uh, in the mucosal lining of the airways but with the blocking of function of leukotrienes the there is the reverse of these happen that is the smooth muscles are relaxed and the mucus production is uh, decreased these are also not used for the quick relief of asthma symptoms the next includes the omalizumab which is taken as the subcutaneous injection and uh, this is actually an anti-ige antibody uh, because uh, immunoglobulin E is responsible, mainly responsible for evoking the allergic response, uh, since the omalizumab blocks the IgE, there is decreased allergic response. It is used in patients whose asthma is not controlled with uh, other medications. This is not used for the quick relief. The next includes the chromoline sodium taken as the inhaled form and uh, this stops the release of histamine from the mast cells now, what does the histamine do it uh, uh, increases the contraction of the smooth muscles but with the blocking of a release of histamine the smooth muscles are relaxed these are used for the long term use and not for the quick relief of asthma symptoms now the nursing interventions 
the nursing interventions include educating patient about the triggers uh, these are the situations or the objects which which can trigger an asthma attack in a patient uh, like the uh, pet dander like the molds pollens dust etc and the patient is educated about these uh, triggers and uh, is advised to avoid these to uh, to prevent uh, an asthma attack if a patient with asthma is exercising he is likely to get an asthma attack and uh, to prevent this the patient is advised to do a warm up 10 to 15 minutes before uh, starting the exercise and is uh, instructed to take a short acting beta agonist uh, before the starting of exercise because this really uh, decreases the chances of uh, uh, developing uh, asthma attack when a patient is presented with asthma attack the nursing interventions include taking the signs and uh, sim uh, taking the vital signs to establish a baseline for the patient and these signs and symptoms can be compared with the signs and uh, symptoms uh, these vital sorry the, we, these vital signs can be compared with the vital signs uh, taken later on after the giving the medications help the patient to keep calm don't uh, present in front of the patient as anxious or worried because this uh, can increase the anxiety of the patient and can aggravate the asthma attack to ease the breathing the patient is given a high fowler's position uh, the supplemental oxygen is given to the patient to maintain an oxygen saturation of 95 to 99 percent there is uh, the uh, administration of bronchodilators we have to administer the bronchodilators to the patient to dilate these bronchi and uh, reduce the signs and symptoms of uh, asthma assessing the lungs for wheezing or any other abnormal sounds the this is done before giving the medication and after giving the medication to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatment the patient is assessed for the development of sinuses because it is a sign of decreasing oxygen levels in the patient and in sinuses there is bluish discoloration of the mucosal membranes and the nail beds thank you that was all about the asthma